Hi friends, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Today my post is about how to improve your balance and to prevent falls. The topic is of particular importance because I've been thinking about this uh, uh, based on some conversations I've had with some of you and also with my mother uh, who uh, has been unstable. So I thought it would be a good appropriate opportunity to review the literature and apply it to our patients applied to myself, uh, etc. Every year, uh, one out of every three people over the age of 65 in our country fall. That's a big number. Falls can prove fatal for about 22,000 people. So in other words, if one out of three people are falling, the combined toll of that is about 22,000 per year. The important thing to understand is that shaky balance is a downward spiral. The more one is shaky, the less people exercise, the less you exercise, the more the shakiness gets exacerbated. Potentially there can be a fall. The fall then leads to decrease in confidence and all of this continues to spiral down uh, and, can, and uh, uh, can lead to things like hip fractures, head injuries, cuts, and most of all, I've seen loss of confidence. So, but the good thing is, I think all of these can at least be stemmed, if not improved on, and definitely prevented, depending on where we are in that spectrum. The body's balance system is very complex. It consists of the brain, the spinal cord. There's a system in the ear, the inner ear, that consists of a semicircular canals, and it's a very complex structure that tells us where we are uh, in terms of balance and that that information from here the information from the vision you know the information from the joint system so if you close your eyes we are able to say which position our joints and body in that's called proprioception these impulses from the muscles from the tendons uh, and bones all of this gets incorporated into the brain giving us that sense of balance now investigating What's causing balance problems includes a good physical exam. A physical exam can tell us if the one part of the joints are weak, how much there is impairment, and the, one of the easiest tests that I, I, I watch for patients when they get up is the ability to get up from the chair without support. If one can do that fast, one can do that uh, uh, in less than 10 to 15 seconds. That's a good uh, measure that there is good balance and muscle strength. Sometimes a hearing exam is very helpful because impaired hearing can do that. And then there's a test of that inner ear of that semicircular canals that I was talking about, which is called video nystagmography. So in other words, there's a way that the eyes move if that inner ear is disturbed and that can give us a sense that it's an inner ear problem. Sometimes you need imaging of the brain. Uh, sometimes you need echocardiogram because if the pump that we talked about two weeks ago is impaired, that can decrease the blood supply to the brain and cause dizziness and can cause um, uh, falls. Age-related problems that can come up uh, include low blood pressure. I've seen this, especially I've seen this in my mother. The, you know, she had lost a lot of weight. Uh, the, uh, as the weight went down, her requirement for her blood pressure medications went down. So therefore, she was taking the same dose and the blood pressure was way low and when she got up the heart was not able to keep up the blood didn't go to the brain and there was dizziness the, and the fix was quite simple hearing and problems of the inner ear that's what i'm calling the vestibular system here visual problems if you can't see if you're not paying attention or can't see or there's cataracts the vision is impaired that can be a problem decreased muscle strength is very big the muscle strength continues to decline after the age of 30 if one doesn't maintain it. So maintaining both lower and truncal body muscle strength is probably the biggest thing that I emphasize uh, in, in, to our patients to prevent falls. Also when we age, the reflexes. So in other words, if we tip, you know, there's a reflexive action to correct ourselves, that's impaired. Sometimes if we are not paying attention constantly to where the joints are, that nerve pathway 
uh, goes down. So impairment of what that's called proprioception can be a problem. Now, as we age too, bone thinning can be an issue. Bone thinning by itself doesn't cause balance problems, but bone thinning can put us at risk for fractures if we fall. So that's a big thing. There are several non-age related but health conditions. For example, there's a condition called benign positional vertigo. We, you know, we've sometimes uh, uh, hear that. This happens because in the inner ear, some of the particles get loose and start rattling around and that causes benign positional vertigo. Sometimes inflammation of the inner ear called labyrinthitis. There's a condition called Meniere's disease of the inner ear where it's associated with hearing a ticking sound, dizziness, uh, 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 balance problems, etc. can happen from that. Most common eye problems are diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma. So I think it's always important to have a routine eye checkup, not just for vision impairment, not just for glasses, but to make sure the pressures in the eye. So if the eyeball pressure starts getting high, that's glaucoma. Arthritis is a big issue because if you can't get up, if there's things that can put us at risk for falls. If the heartbeat rhythms go out of whack, arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation can cause dizziness. Of course, there are several neurological or brain problems such as stroke, uh, if there is weakness of the muscle through that, Parkinson's, if there's muscle rigidity, and multiple sclerosis, all of these can cause uh, uh, balance problems and lead to falls. I think as we think about it, looking through the medications can be very helpful. Make sure that the blood pressure medications are appropriate and it's not running too low. Hard drugs, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications that can sometimes make the mind groggy, pain medications, all of these ones that uh, have to be looked at very carefully if one is having some gait or balance problems uh, or having falls. So talk to your doctor about that. Here are some suggestions uh, that uh, I will start looking at and here's the meat of the talk. Things that you can do to prevent falls based on what we just talked about. I think make sure you review your medication list with your doctor. Work on posture and gait. So just being mindful of how we sit. You know, if you sit erect, we're already training the muscles of the core to keep our body straight. I think getting your eyesight checked, getting the pressure in the eyeball checked, making sure there's reading glasses and bifocals that we're wearing so that we're looking where we're walking. Improving muscle strength is one of the biggest strategies and I want to cover that at the end of the talk with a few exercises that I want to suggest. Continue to work on strengthening ankles and feet. Those are the foundations and there are specific exercises that can help with that. You can talk to a trainer at the, either at the sportsplex or any of the gyms. You can talk to a physical therapist. You can talk to a doctor, but give attention to that. Uh, wear shoes that are well fitting, uh, because if you don't have shoes that are well fitting and you don't feel it, that can be a big trip hazard. Continue to talk to your doctor about conditions that we talked about, such as heart problems, medications, and f don't forget, alcohol can be a big player in falls. If our balance is impaired and on top of that there is some, sub there is some impairment of the nervous system by alcohol, that can be a big problem with falls. And continue to keep an eye on weight, our body weight. The leaner we are, of course, the better it is. There are things that you could do uh, at home uh, uh, through a checklist. And, and here are things that can be done. If the mattress is too high or too low or slippery, you could fall. Make sure that there's a night light on so that when we get up, our brain is not so oriented and we don't have anything that we'll trip. There's a path to where we need to go, bathroom or wherever that we need to go at night. A grab bar in the bathroom as well as adhesive strips or mats in the shower. Sh Walk-in showers are always helpful. Uh, you know, stepping into a bathtub, etc., to shower can be an, a fall hazard. Having items within reach when we, you know, uh, is always going to be helpful. There is a concept that has been come about, which is called zero entry. Architects uh, that have this in mind, uh, or builders that have this in mind, design houses 
where everything is at one level so that you're not having too many steps, too many impairments, too many bumps, uh, and everything is at one level so that we don't trip. I think it's important to have well-lit entrances to the house. And I think stairways need to have lights and as well as good handrails. Make sure that the carpeting doesn't have any bumps and it's teetered down right. Make sure that the floor is cutter free, you know, loose lying rugs are big trip hazards. Electric cards are cards that run across. And I think make sure that there is some programming of numbers in your phone where you can quick reach for somebody that can help. There is a thing called Lifeline, which is with an extra cost to it, where you can just press a button to a pre-programmed line. Uh, that can be an option if one wants to uh, keep independence, but at the same time, there's a risk for that. And many times, friends, this is things that we need to look out for family members, because if family members are already uh, uh, having some fall impairment type stuff, they may not have the self-awareness to understand where they're at. So please use this information for your friends and loved ones. The number one activity that would help as a foundation is walking. I have put out a schedule here that tells us how many sessions that we can do per week and how many minutes. And it's really nothing big. All we need is five to 10 minutes every week and increase that by five minutes every week so that in eight weeks, we are walking about 150 minutes per week. That's really not a lot. We're only talking about you know, uh, uh, five times of 30 minute walk by the time of eight weeks, but we all have the capacity to add a few minutes. The more we do that, walking is such a complex activity that it trains all of those aspects that we talked about, the joints, the brain, the spinal cord, the vision, uh, all of that. And if you can't walk outside, walk inside the house. If you can walk on inside a mall, do that. If you go to the sports place, we can do that. Young Arena is an option. So walking is the foundation and walking in a systematic way so that it's goal driven. The second aspect of it is I have a suggested workout from Harvard Health about a beginning balance workout. It goes through shoulder squeezes so you're working your upper trunk as a get up and go where you can get up from the chair. There is uh, some things that you can just sit up and stand and these exercises are focusing on the legs and on the core make sure that you're getting up on the heel raises you're doing some kind of isolated left lifts you're strengthening your hamstrings you're stretching your hamstrings and you're actually turning so these eight exercises that are listed take less than 10 minutes to do and i would highly encourage all of us to start with that walking doing these exercises talking to your doctor, looking at your medications, looking at your home. These are so many suggestions that are in there and I'm hoping that all of you take make a checklist of this. If you wanna to talk to me about this, I have more information that I'm glad to share with you as to a checklist that you can go through. Please reach out to me. I, I hope this will trigger some of us to take action to prevent falls because I so want that for all of us. Thank you.